So just consciously remembering, okay, what does it mean to be human? Well, what it means to be human is to be flawed, to make mistakes, to have challenges. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's what makes us interesting. You know, so remembering that, that you aren't alone, that this is part of being human, that nothing's wrong with you for having this can really help counteract those forces. Because when we feel all alone and isolated and and lonely, then the shame starts arising and it it makes it so much worse than it it needs to be. Yeah. I I know that a lot of people struggle with negative self-talk and even just those negative beliefs, like I'm not good enough. And and so I, I know they might understand this concept, but what like practical ways do you help people guide people to let go of those negative mind like thoughts? Well, so one thing that's really interesting is, um, you know, so one way to talk about the negative self-talk is the inner critic. And the inner critic is a, a part of ourselves that's actually serving a function. So this part of ourselves, if you're really going to dig down deep, is actually trying to help us stay safe. And so it's often criticizing ourselves because we think either help us change in a way that'll help us be safe, you know, or maybe it learned as a child that, you know, um, if you didn't get in line, you're going to be punished in some way. So this is a part of ourselves that's kind of taken on the role of keeping us in line through criticism. And it, so its intention is good. But it, the, the, its uh, outcome is not yeah. so good <laughs> because actually it doesn't yeah. help. It's, it's not nearly as effect, uh, effective as compassion and understanding and support. But this part of ourselves, it only knows one thing. It's got the whip and it's using it out of a desire to help ourselves. The problem is if we, if we try to suppress this part of ourselves, like just let it go and like just not believe it or suppress it, Then it says, but wait a second, there's a problem we got to fix. And then it takes over the system so that all we hear is the voice of the inner critic. So really useful approach is to, first of all, have some compassion and appreciation for inner critic that works so hard and has agreed to take on this burden (laughs) of trying to help us through the whip. You know, thank you, inner critic. I really appreciate your efforts. Um, but could you make a little room for some other voices to come in? <laughs> so we also have other voices, right. like the compassionate part of ourself that speaks so easily when it's giving advice to a friend or is there for a friend. I mean, this compassionate part knows what to say, is really, you know, comes online easily for others. So inner critic, would you mind making a little room for this other part of me, my compassionate part to speak up? You know, and so, but it's really about embracing all of our parts, including our negative self-talk in compassion, understanding that the reason is it's not because we're mean or bad. We're just trying to stay safe. We just want to be loved like all human beings want to be loved. You know, and then once you have that, so, so in other words, we don't exclude anything from the circle of compassion including that negative self-talk. And then it loses its hold, it loses its grip. Yeah, that's a great perspective shift because I think a lot of people talk about changing and letting go of the negativity. But like you said, it's literally wired, like literally wired in our brain. And so just be grateful for it, just, right? Be grateful for it and say, okay, maybe as a few good tidbits, but don't have to believe that the emotional message of that we're unworthy and, you know, it's like, it's trying to help us keep safe, but it's not often these parts form where we were very young, we weren't mature, you know, we, we didn't have much perspective, you know, and again, it kind of comes from this fear response. Yeah. So the more compassion you can show to your inner critic, the more compassion you can show for all of you. And also, and again, this more compassion inward, the more compassion outward. Yeah. And compassion for your inner critic could also be compassion for how that critic came to be like, maybe it's the voice of your parents. And then some people hold a grudge yeah. against, oh, you, you made, you know, you instilled this mindset in me, but it's having compassion for them as well. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, a lot of parents, you know, they're kind of doing the best they can. And so even though we know from the parenting literature that encouraging and supporting your kids is more effective at motivating them than criticizing them. A lot of people don't know that. And maybe that's the way they were raised. So at some level, you know, it's kind of misguided attempts to to help people and especially to keep them safe. So remembering that allows us to kind of relax and open our hearts a little bit. Um, And then so these other parts of ourselves that are more intelligent, kind of wiser, more mature, 
that they can speak up and guide us. And it's interesting, those parts are usually, not always, but usually the parts that come online with the good friends we care about. Yeah. You know, we have, we all know what that, we have, you call it your higher self, your compassionate self, whatever you want to call it, but it's there. It's a part of ourselves. This is the good news. We don't have to invent a whole new skill. It's already inside of us. We just, the skill is really learning how to access it, remembering to access it. 